All right, so now let's talk about testing and grading. So how do we evaluate your code and you know how can you use that uh, testing process to improve it, which is the main way to do it and also to understand what we expect. So the test suites for the MP, so the first question is like, where is this stuff even located? So if I open up uh, app test Kotlin, you'll see a couple of files. And what we're gonna do in the future is when we release MP1, we're gonna give you a new set of tests for MP1. When we release MP2, the third checkpoint, we're gonna release a new set of tests for MP2 and you'll run those tests. And the way that we're gonna structure our work together is that typically the test for the MP will have four uh, test cases that you need to pass. And we'll have four lessons over the two weeks of the checkpoint. Each lesson will focus on a specific test. We'll talk a little bit about the code that surrounds it and what else you need to understand in order to pass it, and then leave you the work of actually writing the code and, and finishing the job, right? Usually that's gonna work out to about a homework size piece of code to write, sometimes maybe a little bit more, um, but you know, our goal is really not to, to, to juice the workload at this point, right? We, we wanna keep things uh, under control. Um, all right, so helpers and matchers, these files contain Kotlin code that are there, that's there to support the MP test suite. So you don't need to understand what's in there. And in fact, if you open up one of these, you'll see that there's a comment that says that you don't need to, to understand and you should modify this code. Um, let's look at an actual test suite. So this is the test suite for MP0. Now, um, how do you, how, let's run this, right, while I start to talk. So up here, there's a run configuration called test MP1. And when you run this, uh, it's gonna run the MP0 test suites. Now, one thing I want you to understand, particularly the first time you do this, is this may take a while. Uh, if you're on a slow network connection, so we use this framework called RoboElectric to allow us to run what are called integration tests over your entire app. The first time that RoboElectric runs, it has a pretty big download that it has to do. And so if you haven't run the test suites already, it may take you know, a few minutes if you're on a fast network connection. And if you're on a slow network connection, it may be time to go get coffee or run it overnight or something like that. It can take a while. It's a, it's a pretty big download that needs to, to finish. If you're, having a if you're having a lot of trouble with this, come ask us on the forum, particularly if you're overseas or behind a really slow network connection, and we have some, some ideas for workarounds. Okay, um, now every MP test suite is gonna contain a mixture of graded and ungraded tests. Um, and those tests fall into two categories. By the way, I'm actually also sort of reproducing some of what's in here in the text, right? Um, so there are what are called unit tests that we give you, and those typically test one piece of functionality, like um, a particular method or a particular part of, of like a particular piece of your server code, right? And then there are what are called integration tests. And to run an integration test, we actually have to simulate your app. Those are typically slower, but it also allows us to test like entire aspects of app behavior. Like for example, does it display the right list of restaurants when it starts up? Things like this, right? So, th so th th those are pretty cool. Um, now, like I said, there's a mixture of ungraded and graded tests. Um, that mixture may vary depending on the test suite. So for MP0, there's only one graded test and there are four ungraded tests. Those four ungraded tests should already run as, and succeed. You'll see over here that I ran the whole test suite and there were four tests that, that passed and only one that failed that we need to fix. Um, those four tests that passed are there because I wrote them when I was developing the MP, right? And, and so I left them there partly because I wanna underscore a really important message about how software creation works, which is that writing test suites is a normal thing to do. It's not weird. It's not something we do just for grading. I wrote these to make sure that the code I wrote for MP0 worked. I've been doing this for 20 years, right? I have a relatively high degree of confidence in my own abilities. But one of the things that I do to really help me sleep at night and to let me make forward progress is I write test suites. Um, and I write the test suites first and then I write the code so that they, they pass. So I've left the test suites in here that I wrote as I started to work on the MP. Uh, just so you can see for two reasons. A, if they start not working, then you've broken something that you need to fix. But also because I want you to understand this is a normal part of software creation, not something that's just like a part of academic grading or something like that, right? Um, the other thing about the test suites that we're going to give you for this class is that we're going to give you the test suites that we run during official grading. We're not hiding anything. There's not something like a special test case that only runs when you submit. There's nothing like that. These are the test cases that we run uh, when, when you submit for official grading. In fact, the grading process is identical when you do it locally as it is remotely with, the, with, a, few, uh, with a few modifications. Um, 
So we're not hiding anything. We're not trying to trick you. The test suites that we've created are also designed to be idiomatic. These aren't like trying to like trick you or trying to fool you or trying to find some weird mistake. These are the kind of test suites that I would write if I was working on a project like this to make sure that my own code worked, right? They're not grading test cases. There are actual real test cases. Now, you may find in certain cases that you've made mistakes that they don't catch, right? That's okay, right? They're not perfect either. Um, but they're also not designed to be kind of like strange and, and overly harsh, right? They're like, like I said, this is, these are very similar, if not pretty much identical to the same type of test cases I would write if I was working on a similar project, right? And not, not for, not for a grade, right? For real, right? Um, if you look at, for example, the code for our, uh, a lot of the components that you guys use, like our homework system and the, the backend playground and stuff like that, we have hundreds and hundreds of test cases that we've developed over the years, right? Um, and so this is a real thing. These are extensively commented, uh, so I'm not going to go through them in detail. Um, but you know, we've, we've tried to write down and we'll try to continue this pattern as we go forward uh, with the new cases for future checkpoints. Um, when something goes wrong, uh, this is what to do. I mean, click on uh, the test, look at, now this output is not necessarily super helpful, but we, we did turn on um, something so that you can see the logging output. So if you add logging to your app, you'll be able to see the logs here. Um, and there's information about what happened. And it says main activity has wrong title. And we've tried again, we've tried to make these pretty suggestive. So we were just looking in a previous video at the code for the main activity. Um, you might wanna go back there and poke around a little bit and see if you can see where the title is being set and what's wrong about it, right? And in fact, Android Studio is gonna be able to help you with this. Um, this is the only graded test. So you'll see that the graded tests have this graded annotation um, in the future, there'll be four, typically about four graded chest tests per checkpoint, maybe a few more. Um, this one's worth 90 points. So you get pretty a pretty big chunk of your grade for the class by just fixing this one uh, mistake. But you've come a long way to get here and in installing Android Studio and getting things to work and, and all that kind of stuff. All right, so as you're working on the MP, run the test suites. Okay, some of you will be tempted to run the grader all the time, and the fact is the grader does not provide as good output as the test suites do. The grader runs the same test suites, but all it does is really compute a score. It doesn't produce output, it doesn't produce these helpful error messages. Um, that's something that you really need to run the test suites to see. One last thing I'll show you a little bit of a, of a power tool here is that you can run individual tests. So I, I go over here on the left and click this little diamond thing. I can just run this one test. Right, And typically, when you're trying to make progress in the future, you want to run one test at a time. We'll help you figure out which one you should be working on, and then you're going to isolate that test. You're going to run it. You're going to check the output. You're going to try to understand what's wrong. You make some change to your code, run it again. Still wrong? Try to make some more changes, run it again. This is the workflow that you get in. Right? Run the test, try to fix it. Run the test, try to fix it. Once the test succeeds, you're done. Right? Move on. Um, is this how real programmers work? It is, actually. It's how I work, right? Uh, you know, when you guys find bugs in some of our systems online, the first thing I do is I write a test for whatever system is broken, and I make sure that test fails, and then I go fix it. Frequently, I know what needs to be fixed, but I like having the test there, so then in the future, if it breaks again, um, I know, right? So this is a way to run one test at a time. Now let's run the grader. So you go up here, uh, you run this grade task, this is exactly what we do when we do official grading on our server. So when you submit, which we're gonna talk about next, this is exactly what happens. We run the same step, okay? So again, there's no secret here. Now, we copy over some code so that, you know, we don't, for example, if you change the test suites, we don't, uh, we don't accept those changes, right? Because you could just remove all of them. You're like, oh, I got 100. Uh, so there's certain files from your code that we copy over and others that we don't. But that's really the only difference, right? Is that we, we use some of our own trusted uh, code. And you'll see here um, that, you know, this particular test that I'm, I'm working on right now is not succeeding. And so I'm losing 90 points because of that. Um, and we also run a linter called detect. And if you have problems with uh, some of the errors generated by that tool, we can certainly help you. All right, uh, I wanna show you a couple of other things here. Uh, one is that we did provide you with a, a linter, right? And the linter is going to run that DTAC task. It's also going to run a formatter. 
So there is a, uh, a formatting tool that will actually take all your code and reformat it according to the, the, the particular formatting specification. So if there's some parts of your code that aren't you know, indented quite right or lines are too long or things like that, that can help, right? Um, and you'll see in this case, it didn't modify anything. If it does modify files, it'll tell you about it, right? Um, and and that's, that's pretty much it, right? So, so that's the grader that you run. Now, let me make something really, really clear and I'll repeat this again later. When you run this grader, it does not count, okay? It does not count. The grade task here is not official grading. It does not submit anything. It does not change your grade. It's just for you to monitor your progress, right? It really doesn't, again, it does not count, right? Um, it's only so you can see a score before you submit to make sure that you are, you know, you're on the right track, right? Uh, you know, every, every semester somebody is going to get this wrong. And so I don't, I don't know how to say it anymore emph emphatically, but like this is not official grading. This is just a step you take along the way, right? In the next uh, video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to submit your code for official grading and what happens at that point.